APC Knight Countess is the kind of figure that I feel like third parties really should do more of. We do get that sometimes, but basically what I mean is it's a figure that we need it. Like, so many third parties are just like, oh, it's Masterpiece G1 again, or, you know, movie Masterpiece style. And it's like, I get we're waiting on some things, but then, like, we don't need to rehash Optimus Prime. We don't need to rehash Devastator. We don't need to rehash Ratchet. Like, we've done so many of these figures, but then we've got something like this, which is essentially a redo of uh, Transformers Prime Arachnid. Now, I've never owned any other Arachnid toys before, but I never wanted to own the Deluxe because I've seen the videos. I've seen the video, TJ Omega's Plastic Addict on it. It's like just an awful figure, and I have no interest in it whatsoever. But it's also the kind of thing where like Hasbro wasn't going to make a new one. I mean, there is a chance, because they're revisiting Prime through Legacy, there is a chance we'll see Arachnid, but it's not going to be this kind of thing. You know, it's going to be something that they can remold into something else, so it's going to be like a G1-ified Arachnid if they do an Arachnid. But the point is, this is the kind of thing that I wish I saw more third parties do, where they give people an option for a spoilers, I guess, actually good version of a figure, of a character that doesn't really have a good figure and is likely not going to get one anytime soon. And that's what this is. Um, obviously looking a little weird here. I just wanted to show this off early on how uh, she comes with these extra legs that you can attach for various reasons in uh, robot mode, but you can use them for the helicopter if you want to make some weird spider helicopter, but I'm gonna I'm just gonna take these off. And they just peg into the sides here, but yeah, I'm gonna take these off for now, and we'll look at these again when we get to the robot mode proper, because this is not part of the vehicle mode, really. It's just a thing you can do. But this is Knight Countess slash Arachnid's actual, uh, helicopter mode, and it looks pretty darn good for, you know, for what it is. And I, I'm also really surprised with this figure in how it's an original design. Like, APC Toys has pretty much been doing, like, reissued knockoffs of Prime figures, and this is an entirely new mold, which it's surprising. I just, uh, you know, normally when a company that does knockoffs tries their hand at, like, their own thing, uh, it doesn't always go well, but this is a surprisingly solid mold, and despite appearances both in vehicle and robot mode, the engineering's actually not that complicated. So yeah, uh, <laughs> it's a neat little figure, and it looks pretty close. I mean, I don't have like a render to look at, but from what I can recall from the show, this looks pretty close to the stealth attack helicopter, whatever it was, that Arachnid took the uh, alt mode for. And, like, obviously some liberties are taken. Like, you can clearly see feet back here. And the uh, entire lower half of the robot <laughs> just stretched along the bottom there. But for what it is, for what it does, and the simplicity of the actual transformation, I think it's pretty cool. Now, the uh, purple... I I wish the purple was a little bit either brighter or more vibrant, so it just stood out on the black a little bit better. But it does, like, you can see it. I just think if it was a little bit brighter, a little bit more vibrant, it would pop a little bit more. Like, the pink on the sides here, that looks great on black, but the purple just kind of gets lost a little bit. Um, but I do think, like, besides this, I think the actual shape and contours of the helicopter is pretty nice. It's sort of like a potato bullet shape in the front, but then you've got these extra little added spiky bits along the back, which I think are kind of neat. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it's, uh, I don't have a whole lot to say about the vehicle mode. It just works. It gets the job done. Uh, I do think that the blades are a little bit like, eh, with these claw bits at the end, but that's, you know, because 
you want to use it for the robot mode. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's about all I can say about the vehicle mode. I think it looks fine. The colors are pretty basic. Like in this mode, at least, it's just black, and then you get a little purple, a little pink, a little purple. But it is a stealth helicopter, so it makes sense that it doesn't have a whole lot of color on it. With that said, let us put her down here and bring in our size comparison so we can move right along. Here we've got Art Fire and Rotor Storm and Burnout and Samus there. And, uh, you know, compared to Burnout, a uh, standard ish deluxe, she's. A little bit small, but roughly the right size to be, I guess, loosely considered a Lux, maybe? I really don't know how this shakes out, because they're uh, APC toys, they're doing, like, their prime figures are, in some cases, ever so slightly larger than the originals, but then in other cases, they're the exact same size. Like, I also have their bulkhead. And that's just the same size as first edition bulkhead. It's just first edition bulkhead. Though I think there are some slight adjustments. I don't know that they necessarily re-engineered that figure, but it definitely has more solid locking points than I remember from uh, from the first edition one that I used to have. Anyway, bring in there. So there we've got the spider helicopter with the duck tank. Now before we transform. Night Countess into her robot mode. Just want to say real quick, if you like this video so far or any of the other videos on the channel and want to support the channel, I do have a Patreon available. There's a link in the description to that. It's a single $1 tier is all I have, but that $1 a month gets you early access to new videos and, as I said, supports the channel. If you'd rather do something that supports the channel that doesn't involve money, you can always like, subscribe, watch videos, that kind of thing. In addition, there is a different link down in the description for a Discord server run by ShowZ, which is an overseas site that sells a lot of third-party KO stuff that I've been using for years. They're great. If you follow that link and join the Discord server, then I get a little bit of store credit that I can use towards purchasing stuff in the future, and that will uh, make more videos. Now, with all that out of the way, it's time to transform Night Countess, and uh, you don't have to to technically take the helicopter blades off for transformation, but I am going to do it just to make things a little easier. And it just pegs in at the top there. So that's pegged in, and as we saw earlier, it does spin, but we'll just take this off for now. Put that off to the side and come back to it. Now, as I mentioned, the transformation on this figure is actually surprisingly simple for how complex you'd think it would be to get something like this to turn into something like Arachnid, but yeah, uh, you want to unpeg these flaps from the side. It's this piece that goes along here, and there's this little, you can just kind of make it out, the tab sticking through there. So you want to untab that, and then pop this out and bring it down. And then same thing on the side. Untab it, bring it down. Now, I'm going to fold these flaps up and out of the way. They don't fold up all the way, but they fold up about, about like that. And with those folded up, we can now unpeg the legs. The legs are pegged together around the feet, but they also peg into this little piece up here. So we want to untab all of this, which does tab in pretty securely. There we go. You can see the tabs up there, and then there is where the legs tab in that piece. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. It's really in there. There we go. Okay. Now with all of that untabbed, we can, I guess, just bring the legs down a little bit, pull back the heels, and that's the legs. The legs are really, really simple to transform. <laughs> I can keep these flaps kind of up and out of the way. Now, I'm going to hinge this section here. You can kind of see it's on a little bit of a double hinge. I'm going to hinge that forward a bit just to get that out of the way. 
And, well, actually, while we're doing this, I'm gonna take this piece here and rotate it around 180 degrees. And it just sits like that. Now we want to unpeg the side panels here. They peg in up here, and they peg in towards the nose. So untab that, and untab that, and untab that. And you can see how that one side's already disconnected and swinging around. And then untab that, and now all of that's loosened up. So with all of this loosened up, actually, maybe I should have pulled off on uh, rotating this. So we'll rotate that back. No, no, I was right. It rotates the other way. Okay. <laughs> this is a mess. I'm sorry. But believe me, this transformation is actually really simple. So with the arms kind of situated like this, these can actually come out a bit and then hinge up and around. No, it's, it is forward. Okay, I think I just need to get the rest of this stuff out of the way, so... There we go, that's what I was missing. <laughs> Sorry, folks. So yeah, this entire section here actually lifts up once it's untapped from these sections here. That lifts up, and this little panel here will flip in, just like that. Now, we've got the room to take this piece rotate that around 180 degrees and redouble hinge it so that the torso just kind of lines up properly here swing this armature this little bit back here swing that up and around and this piece will peg very not securely over that little peg right by the neck I really wish that connection were tighter it should be tighter but it is what it is. And now this will swing back down and just kind of tuck into the body. And then this can kind of settle in and fill that in. You can flip these little bits back, rotate the legs back too while I'm at it. So there we've got all that done. And now for the arms, just want to rotate very slightly this way, the bicep which will give you the room you need to get the hand past this lip here, and then you can straighten out the arm. And it's on a, it's a ball joint and a hinge, so you want to straighten out that hinge. And then the ball joint will be the primary elbow. And now this panel, just tilt back. It doesn't lock in place or anything like that. It will shift around when you're messing with the figure, but it, for the most part, is good at staying out of the way. And from this side, you can see how the hand is tucked up inside there. So by rotating at the bicep, it gives you the clearance to get the hand past all that. Straighten out the arm. Make sure that shoulder stays plugged in. And, uh, oh, one thing I forgot to do. These panels back here actually fold in their usual position, and that gives you a little bit more space around back for the... Uh, shoulder panels. And that is Night Countess, or Arachnid, in her robot mode. And it's a very effective transformation. It accomplishes a lot with a surprisingly simple amount of engineering, and I really, really like it. I do think there are some things about it that could be better which I will get into later, but for the most part, that's pretty cool. And that is a pretty solid-looking arachnid from a pretty solid-looking arachnid vehicle mode. And now, of course, we can bring back the helicopter blades if you want, and those just peg into the back to give her rotor backpack. But to give her more of a show-accurate look, you can untab the rotor blades. There's actually a little tab and slot here. So you can untab. I like to untap two of them. And then rotate them 90 degrees and bring them forward. Unfortunately, the ball joints are a little bit iffy, so once they're rotated, they're really floppy. But rotate the ball joints and then bend them like so. And you can get a little bit of the uh, 
the spider legs kind of going around the body look, which is fine. This is usually how I have her displayed, just because these uh, these things are very, very unwieldy and get in the way on the shelf very easily. But there is that. And yeah, I think this is a really cool figure. Um, the look is nice. You get a lot more purple revealed in this mode, obviously. And in addition to that, you get some gold, which you saw a little bit at the bottom in vehicle mode, but now it's actually like front, you know, full display for everyone to see. Uh, the proportions are pretty good. I think the hip placement is a little too wide. I wish these were pushed in a little bit more. I think it would have been nice if there was either a way to kind of telescope them in a bit or possibly have them pull out for the transformation, but yeah, it is what it is. And it's fine. It's not like, it's not too terrible, but it is just a little bit like, maybe a little too wide. Uh, but the black and purple work really well together. The gold accents also work really well. There is a lot of like just really nice molding too. Like the the shapes of the uh, the various bits are just nicely contoured. The uh, the arms are a little messy around the forearm because of the joints involved, but I think that's fine. The hands are also like. Pretty basic, she can't hold any weapons, but they get the job done. They are adequately clawed. I think, to be accurate, these probably should have the uh, backs of the hands painted black, but for the price and everything else involved with this figure, I feel like what we get is okay. It's just these bits on the shoulders, I wish. These are so easy to come untapped. They come untapped so easily when you're like messing with the arms, and that just... That could have been better, but I suppose it's better that they come untabbed than break. And yeah, I get some of that nice dark purple around the chest, though you don't really get the dark purple anywhere else in robot mode aside from the feet, though that's actually a different tone of purple now that I'm looking at it. That is actually darker than what you have on the feet. So I don't really know the thinking there, but I do like the pink that they added for the highlights around the waist. A little bit of gold in the shoulders, a little gold around the uh, collar, and there is the head that we will look at in a bit. But yeah, considering everything that this figure does and needs to be, like, it's very clean. There's really not much in the way of kibble. The transformation is shockingly simple for what it is. And yes, it was a little awkward the way I was doing it, but that's a me thing, not a the figure thing. <laughs> And yeah, this, uh, I don't know, they just did a really good job with this. Now, something that does kind of bum me out with the actual design of the figure, other than those shoulders, is the way that the neck is handled. Because she has this really long neck, which is fine, but the placement and everything, it just when you, with the size of the head and the slenderness of the neck, when you want her looking forward, you get this really big gap down there. So I'm more inclined to want her to look down a bit. But when she's looking down, then she's, you know, looking down. She's not really looking forward. And I just feel like that could have been handled a bit differently. And I mean, you can kind of work around it slightly by playing with like the hip placement and stuff, but still, it's her head and neck look best when she's looking down slightly, and there's... it's just... is... yeah. <laughs> it's a design that I'm not super on board with, but it's not terrible. Now, uh... now let's look at the... let's actually look at the head now. So the head is definitely arachnid. She's got the, uh... Very, very much copyright infringing horns and head design, but the design is really good. I like, too, that there are all these nice gold accents going all over the place. The silver face stands out nicely. The 
purple around the mouth and a little bit around the eyes, I think. Also looks good. And of course, the pink for the eyes looks good. The only problem that I have with the head is uh, the eyes, I feel like they don't quite capture the personality. I, I feel like her eyes are more expressive in this show, which is weird because she didn't have, like, looking at photos, she did have these kinds of eyes. She didn't really have pupils, I don't think. So that's just part of her design, but for some reason just doesn't seem as expressive. And also, I wish they gave her a smirk. The blank face is fine. I don't find this. The sculpt is really good. The deco is really good. But I just feel like it would have fit a little bit better if they gave her a little bit of an evil smirk, you know? I think it would fit better. But they didn't. But, you know, the head looks great besides. The, the sculpting and shape of it all is great. The detailing is great. The color choice is great. It's just a really nice head sculpt. And also these bits are rather pointy. And as we saw for articulation, the head is on a ball joint at the end of that neck. And it is pretty well ranged. So she can look up pretty far, look down pretty far, can tilt side to side a little bit, and then can also look left and right. Uh, the arms on the back are on ball joints at the base, so they can do ball jointy things, and they also bend at this joint. So you've got that, and they can spin, which this is an unfortunate thing. I wish there was like a maybe a little peg here so you could plug this in the other way around or something like that. Like, just plug it in in a way that made it so it didn't spin once it was attached. If there was just some way to lock this when keeping it on the back in robot mode, it would be nice. But there isn't. And I'm going to take this off again, because we're going to look at the other spider arms in a minute. Now, for the shoulders, the arms can do a full 360, but because of all the stuff going on back here, you kind of need to work stuff past other stuff. And there's also the issue of this joint liking to pop out all the time. Like it does peg in, but it doesn't peg in super solidly and it does pop back out much easier than I would like, as I already talked about that. I just I just wish there was a different way that they had done that. But at the same time, as I said, I don't really know what they could have done that wouldn't have resulted in this figure that has, you know, got some really thin joints being more fragile. Now, the arms can go out only about that far, which is a shame. You can't really do much to adjust that. That's just how it works out. Because of the ball joint at the elbow, you get what amounts to a bicep swivel. And also, because of the... Uh, Thing. Because of the transformation, you get a double joint that goes all the way up, but the single ball joint actually goes slightly past 90. And then if you get that other joint involved, then you can go way past that. And as you saw when I was looking at the hands earlier, they are on ball joints, so you get a little bit of wiggle up, down, left, right, and you can rotate them. But because of their design, they can't really hold anything. The waist does rotate and she does actually get what amounts to an ab crunch but these arms <laughs> but it's up here below the torso like midway through the torso so you can get a bit of an ab crunch you can kind of hinge things around in other ways and you do get twist but it's up top and not actually at the waist uh, these little hip skirt things are on ball joints, so you can swing those around to get them out of the way for the most part. The hips are, uh, aside from being spaced a little too far apart for my, for my liking, can kick forward that far. I uh, don't think, yeah, you can't kick forward any more than that, unfortunately. Kick back to past 90. Unfortunate that the forward motion isn't really available. You get a dedicated thigh swivel. You get a 90 degree bend at the knee, and the knee can actually bend forward a bit for the transformation. You do not get any ankle tilts, but given the small size of the feet, I feel like you don't really need it because you're not really going to notice, and she stands just fine. And uh, aside from that, you 
do not get any forward and backward tilt on the feet, but you can adjust the heels, which works pretty well. And the heels are nice and big, so she actually is pretty stable. I mean, she can fall backwards if you have the big spider legs on and they're all like angled a certain way, but for the most part, you don't really have to worry about her falling over. She is pretty solid. Okay. Now for the spider arms again. <laughs> Let's bring these back in. And now these in the helicopter mode were pegged in here, but now they can peg in up here. And the unfortunate thing about this is because of this kind of recessed peg hole here, if you try and peg them in so that they're facing kind of straight forward, it does work, but the angle involved kind of has them angled weird, and also the peg isn't in all the way. So it works better to angle them up so that you can peg it in a little bit more, or angle them down. Which, it, either way, I think it works. It's just, uh, you know, something to be aware of. But I think this actually looks extremely cool when you get all of the spider legs involved. And you can, um, I've done this before, you can have the primary uh, rotor blades attached when you're attaching the spider legs, like the big spider legs. The only problem with that is that uh, that then gives her way too many legs. <laughs> Because, like, this right here means she has 10 legs. Add this, and she has 13. Or limbs, I should say. But it is a thing you can do. Let's peg this in. This is gonna be... It's gonna be tricky. It's gonna fight me. Let's peg it in like that awkwardly, and then... Figure it out as we go. There we go. So yeah, you can have all the arms and stuff plugged in, but the problem is this is a real shell fog with these big limbs. <laughs> so use at your own discretion. Now there is one other thing we can do with Knight Countess. Um, actually, before we do that, I'm going to do the size comparisons real quick because it doesn't really add to her size, but it's one other kind of gimmick that she has. So we'll look at her right now just for comparison's sake, since she's not going to take up the entire space with those uh, spider legs attached. There we go. And bring in our usual comparisons, Art Fire and Rotor Storm, and Samus and Burnout. And you can see that Knight Countess is... Uh, Pretty tall. Her vehicle mode, if you don't count the rotors, is actually smaller, a little bit longer, but definitely smaller than uh, Burnout. And in robot mode, she is so much taller. It still really impresses me how much this compacts to make that helicopter mode and how well it all works and how overall simple the transformation is. It's just, uh, yeah. Whoever designed this, Definitely on their A-game. Uh, these out of the way. And we, of course, have to do a little bit more for comparisons, because I talked about them earlier. There is APC's version of Bulkhead. And this is just, as I mentioned, it's basically just a straight-up knockoff of first edition Bulkhead, only more affordable. And he actually comes with uh, the upgrade kit parts that you could get separately that give him like hand blasters or a cannon and like an extra rear bumper piece. I did not bother with those because I just kind of think the base figure is enough on its own. But added some repro labels so he does look a little different. And uh, there are a couple of enhancements to this figure, like uh, the underarms here, they're actually gap fillers in the biceps. And there are a couple of spots that I feel like either have tabs that didn't before, or actually tab in better. It's hard to say for sure, but basically, point is, if you're looking for a prime bulkhead, 
This figure is great because it's a slightly improved version of the first edition, and the first edition is a great figure, so uh, yeah. If you're on the lookout, I'd highly recommend him. But of course, we can't look at Arachnid without also bringing in RC. So here we have Knight Countess with First Edition RC. This is also uh, APC's knockoff of First Edition RC because it's cheaper. And this version, I just like the darker blues and the slightly added paint, like the pink in the wrists and stuff. But yeah, uh, same figure, same size and everything, so you can see how they stack up there. They, they look good together. They would absolutely despise each other, but they look good together. <laughs> And lastly, there she is with the duck tank. Okay, now as promised, there is one other thing we can do with Arachnid or Night Countess here. So we're going to get her arms up and out of the way, get these flaps up and out of the way. Now, going to straighten out the legs, bring the heels down, push the legs back together, and peg the. Uh, these bits in the back back together and now there's a secondary hinge in the legs which you may have spotted when we were messing around with the figure but these bits actually unpeg there we go they unpeg and this whole thing hinges up and then you can kind of angle it back and then these bits can come back and cover up the legs a bit. It doesn't... It's not like a super solid thing. It's not... Uh, <laughs> there are no real locking points for this. It just it doesn't lock in place at all. But you can fold the legs up and kind of tuck them away like that. And the reason you do that is because, if you're familiar with the show, she has her uh, crawly mode. So, we'll get these all situated. This might take me a second because uh, it's some of the joints are a little stiff on these uh, on these spider legs. But peg that in and rotate this a little bit forward to make it make sense. <laughs> And get all this situated. Come on. Come on. I have to go this way, I guess. Ah! That is sagging. It's not supposed to do that. These are supposed to be solid joints that don't move around like that. Don't know what I'm doing wrong. Probably doing something wrong. But the point is, it is possible to give uh, Arachnid her creepy, crawly spider mode, pseudo spider mode, and she can crawl around like that. It's, it's these flaps back here. They're not, for whatever reason, they are not holding in place very solidly, and the weight is just making them sag, but with a little tightening that could probably be fixed. But yeah, that is the other thing you can do with Night Countess. Let me change her back real quick. There we go. So that will do it for APC's Night Countess, and this is an incredibly cool figure. She definitely has her limitations. <laughs> but posability is pretty decent. The uh, the transformation, as I said, very simple, but also surprisingly effective. Uh, the look of both the robot and vehicle mode are way better than the official stuff. Maybe not the Legion, I don't know. I don't have the Legion to compare to, but definitely better than the Deluxe. And yeah, I'd say if you're in the market for a Prime Arachnid, this is the way to go. She is still available on Show Z, actually, at the moment, as of recording. 
that may change by the time this video goes up. I don't know, but she is available and she's on sale. I think she's like 40 bucks somewhere in the neighborhood, which I think for what you get is more than adequate. And yeah, I don't know, just a really cool figure. Definitely worth it if you're looking for a representation of this character for your shelf. So with that out of the way, <clears throat> tripping over my tongue here. So with that out of the way, that has been my look at APC Toys Night Countess. What do you all think of this figure? Whatever your thoughts, feel free to chime in down below. I always enjoy hearing from you all. Thank you everybody for watching, and uh, my apologies to anyone who might have been arachnophobic watching this. I am sorry.